Alright, well, today we're going to read Revelation 4 and 5 because they sort of go together. Now, everything up to this point has been pretty straightforward. As we're moving forward, we're going to start to get a little more challenge. Okay, so let's get into it. Revelation 4, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceed lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Okay, I'm going to pause right there and just, uh, <clears throat> before we go further, I just want to clear your mind about something. Um, because I've heard some goofy things about the four, the 24 elders. All right, first of all, the, they represent the 12 tribes of, um, the, in the Old Testament, the 12 tribes, and then the 12 apostles in the New Testament, right? So that's why we got 24. These are representative. Now, remember what it says here in verse 2. And immediately I was in the Spirit. So we don't want to apply physical things to spiritual things. Okay, here's the problem. Once you start to um, imagine something that's not there, and then you begin to build a doctrine around it, you get in a whole lot of trouble. Okay, so it's very simple. All right, don't make it more complicated than what it is. And uh, I'm telling you, it's going to make it a lot easier to understand. So let's continue. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion and the second beast like a calf. And the third beast had a face as a man. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down, before him that sat on the throne, and worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. All right, just to um, clarify, make it simple now that the one sitting on the throne, that's Jesus Christ, okay? And he, for his pleasure, has he made everything? Okay, so maybe you've come across people who have asked, why did God create everything for his pleasure? Very simple, straightforward answer. Okay, let's go to Revelation 5. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders says to me, Weep not, behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns with seven eyes, and which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Okay, um, 
Now, the, the lamb that was slain, right, that was Jesus. There should be no question about that, right? Okay. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. All right, so just to take a snapshot, if you will, we see the word redeemed right here. Okay, for thou was slain. So Jesus was slain on the cross, and he resurrected, right? And we are redeemed by his blood, right? And all anybody that believes, okay? And therefore he has made us kings and priests, and we reign on earth right now. We reign with Jesus. Okay, and just I want to point out this word redeemed. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. All right, so when it talks about he has redeemed us to God by his blood, he has redeemed us from the curse of the law, right? So we're no longer under the curse of the law, which means we are now under the grace of God, which now means we are saved and sealed forever. Very important to know that, okay? And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. It's a lot saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that lives forever and ever. All right, so uh, I just do want to clarify here. This is not uh, something that should be viewed as a, you know, a, uh, an overall picture from beginning to end. This is a snapshot of uh, what's happening right now. Okay, so we are... Though those of us that are born of God, we are saved. We are redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Okay, and the seals have not yet been revealed to us. They've not been loosed, but they will be coming up, all right? Um, so I don't want you to lose sight of um, what we're seeing right here, right now. Because people, I noticed a lot of people get in trouble when they look at the book of Revelation as a progression, uh, a progression, if you will. All right. So I, there are times in the book of Revelation where not everything is a progression from the previous chapter. All right. So we got to look at these as snapshots or as pictures, as paintings, if you will, and know when it is now and know when it is in the future and know when it is in the past, and so forth. All I'm saying is let's not make more out of this than what we're reading, okay? Let's keep it simple. And so far, everything's been pretty simple, all right? Pretty easy to understand, I think. Um, I know people will try to complicate the very simplest things. I get that. But when we get to Revelation 6, uh, it's going to get challenging, it's going to be very interesting. It's going to start to get juicy. All 